This is the second of three videos showing you how to perform a physics simulation in 3D experience. In this video, we will cover the six steps associated with creating a physics scenario. We will continue to work on the simulation for the slotted lug component that we started in the first video. To set up the simulation scenario, we will select the simulation type, select the mesh, define the solution method, and select the element type. To do this, we select the Structural Scenario app, and select a Structural Simulation. The Simulation Assistant did not load, so we go to the Action bar, and load it. We click on Setup, and select the Finite Element model that we created in the previous video. Then, we scroll down and create a Static Perturbation step. To define the element type, we need to access the Feature Manager. As we explained in the Basics of Element Selection video, this is a good element choice if you are new to simulation. So, we don't need to change it. Now we can define the restraints. Before we start defining the restraints, we will scroll the model tree down to the scenario definition. Now we can see the objects that we will create. We will also turn on edges so we can pick geometry. First, we define the restraint on the pinhole. We use the proximity group, and restrain the motion in the X and Z directions. Then, using the two publications, we define a restraint in the X direction, on the adjustment bar edges. Finally, we select a single vertex to restrain the motion in the Y direction. Our part has restraints defined in all three directions. So, it is fully restrained. We can now define the load. If we click on loads in the assistant, and scroll down, we don't see the option to create a remote force. To apply this type of load, we need to go to the loads tab on the action bar. Then, we can select it from the drop down menu under force. For the support, we select the contact phase publication. We then use our ball center point publication to define the application point of the load. Finally, we specify a force of 26 kN in the X direction and minus 2,500 newtons, in the z-direction. Let's update our model. It is worth pointing out, some items are optional and don't have check marks beside them. As long as everything is green, we can proceed. We are now ready to run the simulation. Before we actually hit the solve button, we will show you how to manage where the results of your simulation are stored. On the simulate tab of the action bar, we select Results Storage. You have the choice of either storing the results on your local computer, or on the cloud server. Your system administrator will likely instruct you where to store your results. In our case, we are storing the results locally. Before solving the model, it is good practice to run verification checks. The model and scenario check verifies that you have no errors in the model, or scenario definition. The check runs very quickly. The simulation check verifies that you have no errors in the definition of the finite element model. This check takes a bit longer. But, it is worth performing in case you have errors. Since we have no errors, we can click on the simulate button to launch the solver. We increase the number of cores to 4. This is the maximum number of cores that we can use for a structural simulation using our academic license. Once we click on OK, 
the solving process begins. Our solution is complete. We have now completed the six steps that define the simulation scenario. In our next video, we will show you how to view the results of the simulation. Thank you.